Now, the new look for the MySejatra application now comes with new features by providing the latest information on users' health status. Health Minister Kari Jamaluddin said health screening records and the immunization records of children would also be displayed in the application. He added that users should not be concerned on the application security aspect as the ministry will continuously update its security features. Tapi selama beberapa bulan ini, memang langkah-langkah untuk meningkatkan tahap keselamatan masjid telah dan sedang dilaksanakan secara berusaha untuk memastikan bahawa tidak ada pencerobohan data pribadi. Data ini adalah data yang disimpan oleh Kementerian Kesihatan dan bukan disimpan oleh mana-mana pihak lain. He said this after launching the Perak Level Jelaja Agenda Nasional Malaysia Sehat or ANMS yesterday. On a separate matter, Kairi guaranteed that public health services would not be affected despite government measures in reducing public expenditure. He explained that the savings made by the MOH were not related to key issues such as the supply of medicines but to other expenses. Penjimatan tidak akan dibuat untuk daripada perkhidmatan kesihatan. Perkara-perkara yang tidak melibatkan perkhidmatan kesihatan macam bila kita buat majlis, buatlah di fasiliti sendiri. Tak payah sewa hotel, tak payah ada catering yang terlalu mewah. Itu akan jadi yang pertama. Yang basic essential services, ubat-ubatan dan sebagainya, kita tidak akan potong. The Ministry of Entrepreneur Development and Cooperatives or MIDAC will postpone the implementation of development projects as part of its cost-saving measures in line with the Malaysia Treasury Circular Guidelines on Public Expenditure Savings issued by the Ministry of Finance. Its Minister Tan Sri Noor Omar, however, said entrepreneur development programs would continue to be implemented as they were part of MIDAC's main agenda to help the group recover in the current economic condition. Pembangunan memang mungkin kita boleh tengok uh, pembangunan pembangunan yang patut kita KIV mungkin kita boleh KIV dulu. Tetapi untuk kita nak mem, uh, membantu usahawan, eh, membantu usahawan kita kena kita kena berterusan sebab usahawan ni dia baru nak bangkit. He was commenting on a local media report yesterday that all ministries, departments, agencies, federal statutory bodies and companies limited by guarantee or CLBG have been instructed to implement internal austerity measures by optimizing their spending so that it could be used for the well-being of the people. The directive signed by Treasury Secretary General Datuk Sri Azri Hamidon came into force last Wednesday. Now, the government has given approval and incentives to the National Farmers Organization, or NAFAS, to import chickens from abroad to create a stockpile to ensure consumer needs are always met. Deputy Minister of Agriculture and Food Industries, or MAFI, Datuk Sri Ahmad Hamza, said the move is to ensure that there would be no chicken shortages in the future. Kemasukan sekarang, kita bukakan, tak ada lagi AP. Siapa siapa pun bebas nak apa nak ekspor dan nak import dan kerajaan telah memberikan satu kelulusan dan insentif kepada nafas dan juga koperasi melalui LPP untuk membuat apa untuk import ayam sebagai kita punya stockpile dalam keadaan mana mana perkurangan stockpile ini akan Mekanisme ini akan bekerja untuk membekalkan ayam. Jadi tidak ada, insya Allah kalau, di, kalau izinkan tidak ada apa kekurangan ayam. He, however, said that those wishing to import chicken need to have an import permit or IP issued by the Malaysian Quarantine and Inspection Services Department or MAKIS for the purpose of biosecurity control at the country's entry points. Datuk Sri Ahmad added, among the chicken plants that are currently approved to export chicken meat and chicken cuts to Malaysia are from Thailand, China, Brazil and the Netherlands.
up next, police officer sustained severe injuries after run over by alleged oil smuggler. Now, farmers will be allowed to carry out agricultural activities on idle land owned by the government, especially for growing cash crops. According to Malacca Chief Minister Datuk Sri Sulaiman Muhammad Ali, the development of fallow land could increase agricultural production in Malacca, thus ensuring adequate supply of food to cater for the population. He added making use of idle land for agriculture was among the matters discussed earlier in the Menteri Besar and Chief Minister's meeting chaired by Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob. Saya <coughs> meminta pihak PTG, ya, mana-mana tanah yang terbiar ni, kalau yang di bawah tanah kerajaan, mana-mana yang ada, kita berikan uh, kepada mereka yang berminat untuk membangunkan pertanian-pertanian uh, uh, mengikut pada sektor-sektor pertanian yang mereka mm, miliki. Datuk Sri Sulaiman was met after officiating the 2022 Farmers, Breeders and Fishermen's Day or HPPN celebration, which was also attended by Agriculture and Food Industries Deputy Minister 1, Datuk Sri Ahmad Hamza. A motorcycle police officer was taken to the hospital after being run over by an alleged oil smuggler. Kulim District Police Chief Superintendent Mama Rezwan Saleh said the accident happened around 9.15am yesterday during the pursuit of a Nissan Frontier pickup truck on Jalan Kulim, Serdang. Through a statement, Mama Rizwan said a 31-year-old police officer who is in Hospital Pulau Pinang because of serious head injuries was from the Kulim High Tech Police Station Motorcycle Patrol Unit, or URB. The 40-year-old suspect from Sungai Petani bolted but was captured in Butterworth, Pulau Pinang and tested positive for THC, or marijuana. Upon further inspection, police found that the suspect's vehicle had been modified with a tank in the rear. The suspect, believed to be involved in smuggling oil, was taken to the Kulim District Police Headquarters and will be remanded today. Mama Rezwan said the case will be investigated under Section 307.166 of the Penal Code, Section 15, Subsection 1 of the Dangerous Drugs Act 1952, and Sections 42, Subsection 1, 44, and Section 6, Subsection 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987. The cases of fraud syndicates using mule accounts in Malacca have risen by 13.09% to 501 cases involving losses of 12.3 million ringgit in the first six months of this year. Now, compared to 443 cases involving losses of 10.3 million ringgit in the same period last year. Now, of the number, Macau scam caused the largest sum of losses with 5.4 million ringgit, followed by investment scam, 2.7 million ringgit, and fake job office, 1.8 million. Malacca Police Chief Datuk Zainul Sama said the scams used by these syndicates include the African scam with 30 cases recorded, Macau scam 157 cases, non-existent loans 98 cases, online purchases 115 cases, non-existent job offers 118 cases, loan scams 33 cases and investment scams 107 cases. He said the lack of exposure to a crime involving financial transactions and financial desperation have caused account holders to be willing to let their accounts be used by scammers just to gain commission of payments. Uh, kita telah merancang ha, untuk mengadakan uh, sesi penerangan di mana uh, kita akan turun uh, ke uh, uh, ke Jeperun ke ke, ke kampung-kampung ke, untuk memberi uh, penerangan kepada orang ramai uh, berhubung penipuan atas talian yang berlaku dan memberi nasihat uh, uh, kepada masyarakat supaya tidak terjebak dengan uh, penipuan ini. Datuk Zainal added that 339 arrests involving mule accounts were made in the first six months of this year compared to 269 arrests made in the same period last year.
matches without a win. With a 2-0 victory over Penang FC, who were reduced to 10 men at the Pataling Jaya City Council Stadium MBPJ last night. Now, second half substitute, Mama Shario Fikri Mama Fauzi and Mama Shario Basha emerged the heroes to give the Red Giants three valuable points. In the night action against the Panthers, Michael Feitenbender's men could not find a way through their opponents. But everything changed when defender Ahmad Sukri Abdul Hamid was shown a red card after receiving a second yellow in the 68th minute. Mama Shariel struck in the 73rd minute before Mama Shariel's shot from outside the penalty box six minutes later sealed the team's victory. Now the win has revived the hopes for Salango, who are currently fifth in the table with 15 points from 10 matches to break into the league's top three. Meanwhile, Pataling Jaya or PJ City FC have now gone four matches without a win as they finish with a goalless draw against 2021 Malaysia Cup champions KL City FC at the Kuala Lumpur Football Stadium in Cheras. PJ City took the lead in testing KL City's goal net in the third minute. However, keeper Kevin Mendoza managed to deflect Darren Locke's attempt. They continue to pressure Mendoza through a move engineered by left winger Hadin Azman in the 12th minute. However, lackluster finishing by Fakro Ayman Siddiq wasted their chance of scoring a goal. KL City FC currently occupied the sixth place in Super League standing, while PJ City FC in ninth. This afternoon in our top story, new look and features updated on my Sujatra app. Don't forget to tune in to News at 10 coming up at 10pm on Salora Brita RTM. Till then, I'm Jessica Lee. I'll see you later.